In this video, I'm going to go over how to build low-cost fluorescence microscopes using either a USB microscope that you can buy online for about 20 bucks or a DSLR. So what is fluorescence microscopy? I've got a little diagram shown here. Most people are familiar with bright field microscopes. These are microscopes that just shine white light onto a sample and enable you to see really small structures. The idea with fluorescence microscopy is that specific structures in the sample are labeled with fluorescent dyes or fluorescent compounds called fluorophores. Because only a few things in the sample are labeled with this fluorescent dye, only those things light up. So you're able to visualize these very specific structures in the cell or inside the sample instead of all this other crap that may not be interesting to whatever you're trying to look at or trying to study. So how do these microscopes work? The idea is that blue light or some excitation light, in this example I'm going over a green fluorophore, the blue light excites the fluorophore and the fluorophores emit a different wavelength of light, in this case green. So the green and blue light come up through the microscope but we only want to collect the green light because the blue light is basically going everywhere throughout the sample. To block out the blue light, there's a filter, usually called a long pass filter, that blocks out wavelengths that are less than some cutoff. So in this case, it would be blocking out the blue. So only the green light would come up through the microscope and through these eyepieces so that you can see. Shown here on the right are two images that I've collected with a fluorescent microscope that I build using a DSLR. The sample on the top includes tissue paper and flu fluorescently labeled string. It's just some thread that's been kind of pulled apart and with the dye just put on the string. Because only the dye, because only the string is labeled with this fluorescent dye, only the string lights up. In the light, in the white light image, everything's kind of mixed together. It's hard to see where those strings are. You can kind of see them right here. But when you move to this fluorescence mode, you're able to see just the fibers of the string. And you create this really cool looking fluorescent image. Now I'm going to go over the operation of the USB microscope version of this fluorescence microscope. This is my fully constructed fluorescence microscope. Here's the USB microscope. There's this LED ring around the outside. It's an LED strip that's controlled with an Arduino that's off screen. This right here is the filter rack that slides in and out of position. And then the sample goes uh, right around here. There are a few slits where you can slide in the sample. The base, you can just uh, pop off here so that you can position the microscope like, like this. So today I'm going to be imaging a fluorescent slide I made. It's, it's right here. It includes a piece of tissue paper that doesn't have any fluorophore on it, and then a piece of string that does have fluorophore on it. And in, in white light, they both kind of blend together uh, but under the fluorescence microscope, you'll see the, the thread pop out because that has the floor, the floor, uh, the floor four on it. So I'm just going to slide the slide into position here and start with a bright light image. So I have that uh, long pass filter out of the way. So there's no filter between the sample and the microscope. I have to actually turn a light on here because right now all the lights are off. And on the screen I have a live feed of the microscope. I program it, programmed the Arduino to flip through a few different colors. Right now I just want white. And this, this uh, microscope is pretty nice because it's got a focus knob so you can focus uh, on the specimen. Here's what the white light image looks like. You can see the string, and you can see the tissue paper underneath. 
Um, but what if you were just interested in, in the string? This is the idea of fluorescence microscopy. And right now I've labeled that, that string with the, the fluorophore. It's fluorescein that absorbs blue light and emits green. So to switch to the fluorescence microscope, what you need to do is switch to the excitation light, which is blue. And right now, the whole sample is blue um, because blue light is coming in and blue light's going everywhere, including on the string and then bounce and the tissue paper and bouncing up to the microscope. So we, we see just a lot of blue and the thread doesn't pop out. But if we use this long pass filter, we can block the blue light and just let the green light pass through. <clears throat> oh, and I lost the microscope. And so it's a picture of me. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to start this over. I think it doesn't know what to do with the, the big change in uh, light intensity. So let's go to Digital Viewer. That's the program I'm using here. Oh, I didn't plug it in. That would help. I wonder if I can switch Nope, I'm going to just restart it. Uh, not quick time, what's the thing? Digital viewer. Okay, we're back to the live stream and it tries to auto correct and you can see that the thread is really bright. So you need to go into the settings, advance and just lower the brightness and you can see the thread uh, pop out. You can also increase the contrast to, to help uh, help the image a little bit here. Now you can see that the tissue paper has dropped out of the image. It's just this black background green and only the thread that's been labeled with the fluorophore is, is popping out here. And we need to lower the brightness a little bit more. Again, to remind you, if, if you don't have that long pass filter in here, uh, then what happens is all the all the blue light can make it through. Let's go back to default settings, um, and and now the fluorescence microscope isn't as effective as before. You can try to uh, save the image and then just look at the green channel, but those the green channel for an RGB image is is pretty wide, um, so you you may still have some some blue light in there. The long pass filter works uh, really well. All right. So that's the project. I have a full write-up of how to build one of these things along with a few other models including a DSLR microscope. And that, that, that one is more expensive but it's, it works very well and there's some really high resolution images that I have in the Instructable. Alright, thank you for watching.